welcome back to the Scram Downhill Southeast Replay Show. I'm your host, Will Washam, and we're here in Snowshoe, West Virginia for round number five of the 2023 series. Snowshoe is the proving ground for world-class downhill racing here in the Southeast, and this course is primed and ready for action. Racers are loving the conditions and they're ready to turn it up to 11 for racing here at round number three of SRAM Downhill Southeast. We're officially past the halfway mark of the season, so let's get you up to pace on the action of rounds one through four. For round number one, we were at the Trials Training Center in Sequatchie, Tennessee for the second year on this brand new track. Abby Ronka started off 2023 right where she left 2022 with a win here. Shell was second place and Zana Logar rounded out the podium in third. For the pro men, Chris Grice and Nico Mullally were battling for the win with Grice Crispy coming out on top by three tenths of a second. Nico ended up in second place with Jack Peterson taking third. For round number two, we went to Ride Rock Creek in Zirconia, North Carolina. Miranda Miller was on hand, dishing out the speed on the race course, taking the win in pro women. Riley Miller was in second with Maho Montoya rounding out the podium in third. Asa Vermette had his coming out party for 2023 to take a dominant win over Aaron Gwynn and Lucas Shaw in a stacked pro men's podium. It's a 158.61, over two seconds up on Aaron Gwynn. That is incredible from the youngster. Round three brought us to Windrock Bike Park, the longest tenured venue on the Southeast Circuit. Shell Peugeot took the win on her home turf with Zana Logar in second and Maho Montoya snagging another podium position in third. The pro men's race was almost too close to call with Austin Dooley and Chris Grice battling for the top position. A 225.3 into second place. It was Austin Dooley who would rule the day with a winning margin of just one tenth of a second over Chris Grice. Aaron Gwynn would continue his podium ways at Downhill Southeast, taking third place, and Asa Vermette overcame a mid-run crash to land in fourth. Round number four was an east-west showdown where we combined Downhill Southeast with the Spring National at Mountain Creek Bike Park. Our pro women's field saw our current junior national champion Riley Miller on the top step of the podium with a three-second margin over Shell Peugeot. Abby Ronka returned to the podium with a third-place finish in Mountain Creek. Jack Peterson was the highest finishing downhill southeast stalwart, claiming third place on the podium. With Vlad Cherobley in second and Dakota Norton continuing his blistering pace in 2023 with a dominant performance to take the win. Those first four races have led us back down country roads to a place where we belong. Wild and wonderful Snowshoe, West Virginia. The lone stop in the UCI Mountain Bike World Series in the United States this year is right here in Snowshoe. We've been here at Snowshoe for five seasons in a row for the SRAM Downhill Southeast, and this year we're back to business on the lower Hairball Pro Racetrack. This track features the most vertical elevation drop and the longest track distance of any course on our series. And there's no one better to give us the insight on this track here at Snowshoe than Downhill Southeast Pro Racer and Snowshoe Bike Park Trail Crew member Zen Clements. Well, Zen, it's great to be with you. We're getting ready for racing for round number five of the SRAM Downhill Southeast. How you doing, man? Doing great, man. It's been a great season leading up to this. We've got a little bit of time to get what we need to get done, so it's looking shaping up to be really nice. Awesome. Well, what's the weather been like early June when I got up here to start the weekend off? It looked pretty dry and it's continuing to get drier. Mm -hmm. It's been a really dry last couple months for us, really, after that snow we got back in May. But um, yeah, things have been super dry and dusty getting dangerously fast there for a bit. Got a little bit of rain a few nights ago that really helped solidify things up, all the new stuff we've been working on. So really shaped up the dirt nicely. Awesome. Well, how's the crew feeling to get tires to dirt here on this world-class track for the first time this year at Snowshoe? It's incredible, man. I mean, it's just an awesome feeling getting to see it happen. And, you know, we've been working on little things here and there, uh, trying to get it back to the glory of what it could be, you know, what it once was. It's gotten a lot of beatings the last, over the last few years with the, all the different incredible riders that came here and ridden it, so. Well, speaking of those world-class riders, this track has seen them, it's chewed them up, it's spit them out, and mm -hmm. we're on a pretty similar course for the Downhill Southeast race this weekend. We've got three distinct sectors, with sector one starting at the top and ending at the end of Upper Hairball. There's a brand new wood section we broke in for the World Cup last year. Tell us about that section. It's fast and pretty flowy, to be honest, you know. 
Um, there's some slight variances from the track we ran for World Cup last year, but it's going to be the exact track pretty much for this one coming up. Well, speaking of fast lines, there is a new rock garden in Upper Hairball. It was covered in mud when the World Cup was here, but now those rocks are popping through. What are the line options in there? Pretty much straightforward. You got two, two options, three if you're really feeling committed. You know, some I've seen some people just jump, try and get the whole thing, jump into it. You know, I think a couple people got that down successfully today. You got the straightforward line, just bulldozing through the middle of it, and a lot of people are also kind of taking a slower line around and uh, crawling their way into it just to keep it safe. So split number two contains the entirety of the lower hairball rock garden. One of the most heinous sections on the World Cup and the Downhill Southeast Series. Mm -hmm. What's a key section in that extended rock garden that riders are going to have to nail? A lot of it comes down to the bottom, the lower section of it before you get out of the woods because there's so much time that could be, you know, won or lost there. And there's just so many key lines that if you miss or if you're off by just a few millimeters, you know, it could it could hurt you substantially. Yeah, we've seen that final rock section make and break World Cup runs, and we know it'll be a key factor in the race here at Downhill Southeast. What kind of rider does it take to really excel on this track? It's the longest one of the series, probably the most physical one we have on the series. I'd say things like commitment and conditioning, and I mean, just being used to honestly doing full pulls, even not even on this track, just in general. I mean, you gotta know, what your body, what kind of condition your body's going to be in when you're halfway down getting ready to go into that uh, second sector of the track, you know, because it's really physical in there. And if you're really in tune with yourself, then you might be able to push a little bit harder. Well, I'm super stoked to see these guys and girls hit the track. Let's go racing. Heck yeah. Looking forward to it, man. And here are the full standings for our Pro Women's Series overall points. Shell Peugeot is our leader. She's got 89 total points coming into this race today. Abby Ronka's in second. She's only eight points behind Shell, but she is not in action in Snowshoe. She is across the pond following the World Cup Series with her Gravity Academy teammates. Zana Logar, however, is in the field today. She's sitting in third place with 59 total points on the season. Well, we're just moments away from the start of our pro women and pro men's race here at Snowshoe for round five of the Downhill Southeast. The weather has continued to improve and the temperatures dialing up. Hopefully these racers will dial up some pinned race runs for you guys watching at home. Our pro women, Shell Peugeot, seated in first. It was a 426 for Shell, but she's just got a four second cushion on Zana Logar. Zana went a full minute faster yesterday than she did at this race last year. So with that progression, she really could challenge Shell for the win today. Here's Amelia Capuano out of Mechanicsburg, Virginia to start us off in our pro women's race today, riding for Michael David Winery and Cranked Naturals. Capuano has started to heat up her season so far in 2023. Fourth place at Windrock, seventh place at Mountain Creek. She's the first rider that's going to show us some of the terrain here at Snowshoe Mountain. The classic cupcake road gap up top, and this is the 10-gallon section. Some big hits in there. Some options to gap as well. So we're diving straight into these new upper hairball woods that were used for the World Cup race last year. However, you can actually see the rocks coming out instead of 8 to 12 inches of mud this year. It's incredible to have a dry race at Snowshoe. And Amelia is ripping this berm section. It's a key section of the track. You're going to take that speed from the berms into lower hairball, and you need all the momentum you can get. These rocks are going to zap right at your wheels every chance they get. Huge square edges in here. Well, Capano holding it together. It's really easy to get bounced offline. She's going to dive into a steeper section of lower hairball that's going to get you right up to pace. And then she's going to have to shut it right back down for a super tight corner. Safely through there. I have a feeling that's going to play a key role in the race today. You're going to be really pumped up with your arms tired. You've got to get hard on the brakes to make that right hander. And yes, the rocks just don't quit in lower hairball. As Amelia presses on. I would say this is the final rock section, but it's not. There's another huge rock garden after this drop to flat. The 
affectionately known as Roberto's Rock here at Snowshoe. Capuano making her way up to Roberto's Rock. And into this last rock section of lower hairball. Really fortunate to have the dry conditions we have today. As you can see, there's some roots mixed into these rocks in that final section that are polished from years and years of bike tires. Capuano has a nice smooth line there. Bunch of different options on those jumps and compressions, and it's a 452 for Amelia Capuano. So she dropped 14 seconds from her seating time. Have a feeling those times will continue to come down today. As we look to Zana Logar, running for the Gravity Academy out of Davis, West Virginia. She had a 430 yesterday in seating. I know Zana is fired up for this race. It's a home race for her in West Virginia. Saw Zana diving into some lomers early in the week to get warmed up for the race weekend. And it's just a third race that she's had on this downhill bike. Definitely a welcome asset to have on this huge track here in Snowshoe. Oh, and Zana makes quick work of that rock section, fully committed through the middle there. And she's up by 5.18 at split number one. That is huge. There's not a ton to separate folks at that first split, but now it's where the real race begins. So many opportunities to gain or lose time as she dives into lower hairball. So this section right here, relatively flat that we're seeing on screen. You've got a lot of gradient coming into it. She carried great pace across it as the gradient comes back in. A uh, nice setup right there. Able to hit that tight right-hander very smooth. You've got to nail each one of these sections. You could completely throw off your run if you get just a couple inches offline. That section right there, especially narrow. Plenty of options right here as Logar will go the low line. So she'll stay to the right, approaching Roberto's Rock. Oh, smooth landing right there. That rock shock suspension just eating up the drop to flat. Well, I haven't seen much wrong from Xana here in lower hairball. Going right over that big parallel route to exit that section. We take a look at split number two. It's 27.82 up, so that run through lower hairball was immaculate for Xana Logar. She's got a real opportunity to challenge for the win today, and it's a 422 for Logar. That's four seconds faster than the top seating time yesterday from Shell Peugeot. So what a run right there from young Zana Logar. As we take a look back up, Zana just did such a great job of carrying speed through the rocks. That is what it's all about. As we go to our top seated rider, Shell Peugeot. She put down a 426 yesterday running for propane bicycles. So she needs to drop four seconds off that time if she wants to take the win here at Downhill Southeast. Shell on track. Oh, Peugeot deep off the cupcake road gap. And I like that, kind of finishing her turn early in that big sweeping right-hander as Shell's on the edge. Shell is letting it loose today for finals. Shell getting a little bit tossed to the right right yeah. there. Might have been a smidge quicker the line Xana had, but she's up. She's up by 1.78. So a big top half for Shell. She's got herself a little bit of a cushion coming into lower hairball. Interesting line right there. Went a little bit more outside to set up for that right-hand corner. And she's into the thick of it now. Staying in the middle of that camber. Diving straight down into that rutted section. 
And it's not just the bike tires that have been on this course for years and years and years. It's the heavy snows. It's the heavy rains up here at Snowshoe that continue to wash away the dirt. All that's left is roots and rocks and shell with a nice looking run here through lower hairball. Through that key section, it's just so narrow. Really easy to snag your pedals. And these rocks show the scars from all those pedal strikes. Well, there's been some pace from Shell through this middle section. Hard for me to really tell by the eye test if it's faster or slower than Xana looking just about the same. Maybe Xana was carrying a little bit more speed through this section. Is Shell going to get on the inside line exiting the woods? We'll look to split two. And Shell's back by 2.61. So she's lost about three seconds in that middle section. I say it's going to be a really tall order to pull that back between split two and the bottom. There's really not much track in it as Shell powers towards the finish line. And she'll cross the line 5.64 back. So Rochelle Peugeot will go into second place, and that means Xana Logar is going to win this race today. It's going to be her very first downhill southeast victory as she's celebrating there in the finish corral. Yes, the win has finally come for Xana here in the SRAM downhill southeast series. There's our pro women's podium, Xana Logar. Michelle Peugeot and Amelia Capuano in third place. It's good, yeah. I'm like, I'm excited. I've been kind of, you know, wanting to happen the whole series, and yeah, it feels good. In seating, I definitely was off the pedals, just kind of taking it chill, and so I went into today like knowing that I needed to pedal and like. That was my focus, so, yeah, and then just clean lines. You just kind of be off the brakes, confident, like, look where you want to go, and it works out some, most of the time. Our series overall point standings through four rounds. Jack Peterson is on top with 70 overall points, but look who is lurking just behind him in second place. That's Asa Vermet with 68 points so far on the season. A number of our World Cup regulars are not here this week, in the pro men, it was the youngster, Lucas Dodora. He's back in action, and he was on top. He had a four-second margin over another youngster, Collier Key. So it's a takeover of the new generation here at Downhill Southeast. Corey Jackson is going to have something to say about that as he's seated in third place, followed by Cooper Pleva and Cooper Rodriguez. Our series overall leader, Jack Peterson, qualified in eighth, so we'll see him come down early in the show today. Well, let's not waste any time getting up to pace as Asa Vermette is our first rider on track. He's currently sat in the hot seat as he went down very early in finals today. He had a crash in his seating run, broke his brake lever. But what I can tell you is he was fastest at split number one yesterday. So expect there to be blistering pace off the top of this track. Oh, and a huge double already from Vermette at a 10 gallon. One win so far here in Downhill Southeast as he straightens out that section. And pedaling everywhere. You wouldn't think that he's still got three minutes of Rock Garden smashing ahead of him. Vermette not going to leave anything in the tank today, it seems. Oh, and I love that line right there. Oh, and he's on the inside there. Okay. So Asa making that rock garden look super smooth, and he looks speeded up through those berms. Those things are slippery. There's not been hardly any rain the entire month of June. It's going to be some conditions that Asa's familiar with, being from Durango, Colorado, and a double down right there from Vermette. Full commitment is on display from Asa today here at Snowshoe. It's going to be hard on the brakes here. Oh, and gaps into that turn. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that move in all the World Cups we've had here at Snowshoe. An incredibly committed move. It's a gap into that over 120 degree turn, and Aces on the edge. 
So Vermette is flying through these rocks, not even picking a line. I can't really say. Was that low? That was... I'm not sure. <laughs> Vermette continues to charge on into this final rock section. Yeah, he's lining up that crossover, going wide to inside. And on the pedals, just smashing it on this sprint. Well, our top seeding time yesterday was a 3.41 from Lucas Dodora. As Vermet just sails over that triple-double, not having to pull up at all. Yeah, surely this is going to blow that 341 out of the water. Let's look at the time. 326.14. Wow. Asa has put one down today with some committed riding, an incredible display from him. He's sitting second place in the overall, and the man that's sitting first in the overall is Jack Peterson out of Breckenridge, Colorado. Had some troubles in his seating run yesterday. Looking for redemption today. I can tell you he's also been flying in practice. That's really been the talk about the pits. Have you seen Jack on track? Have you seen Asa on track? Oh, and Peterson's down. Peterson is down right at the top of this track. I mean, that's not but 15 seconds into his run. It's going to be incredibly hard to recover from, assuming that everything on his bike is working correctly. But Peterson's still going to crack on. He has been on quite the downhill racing tour of the country this season. He was at the first round of the downhill Rockies out in Angel Fire and then made the trek cross country to oh, Snowshoe. Yeah. Oh, and Peterson's on that far right line as well, is not able to make that stick. Peterson just fully committed and, yep, tells the crowd it's just not his day. They, they don't know he's already been down once. So he's going to try to shake it off and keep rolling down to the finish line. Jack's got enough experience to know when to shut it down. Unfortunately, not going to get to see... One of the trademark loose and fast runs from Jack Peterson today. Looks like everything is okay with his body. Just going to need to regroup mentally. I have talked to Jack, and I know he's going to try to put his name in the hat to get a national team spot to come back to Snowshoe in September. The World Cup will be here September 27th through October 1st. And the downhill race will be contested on these very rocks. Well, Jack's still staying off the brakes. He had to take a deep breath right there. Started getting bounced around just a little bit. It's a really hard track to ride at a medium pace. I mean, you either got to be all out or you've got to be creeping. If you've got the commitment level to be up to speed, you can kind of stay on top of some of these rocks. Well, the fans still trying to spur Jack Peterson on. Definitely a fan favorite here at Downhill Southeast. Not going to be picking up many points in the overall. His main competition, Ace of Vermette, in that overall race. Peterson's still able to pull out a very smooth triple-double. And Jack's going to end this run in one piece. Looks like the bike's in one piece as well. And he will live to race another day, a 4.23.41 for Peterson. Well, we are going to head back up to the top as we're into our top eight now, Peterson. Qualified in eighth as we take a look at this gnarly off in this new rock section and upper hairball. Yeah, Peterson just trying to hang on. Rode it out to the bitter end. We've got Dominic Mudry ready to do battle with this downhill course at Snowshoe. Had a 351 yesterday.
Mudry's had a couple 15th place finishes on the season so far, so really a breakout seeding result for him to land him in seventh place, get him on the live show. So I don't expect Dominic to hold anything back today. Trying to straighten those corners out. There's going to be a ton of action in that section as we move through today's proceedings. And Mudry is on the edge. That left-hander looking like it's getting a little bit blown out in these dry conditions. Dominic with the line straight down the middle. Plenty of options there. And he's just 5.4 seconds back on Ace of Vermette. So Dominic trying to put some power through the pedals as he approaches lower hairball. Looked like a lot of energy expended right there on the pedals. Oh, Dominic's letting it go here. This is the section that could... Oh, no. He's, oh, he's lost it. Oh, just one of those super frustrating crashes was right on the edge of that right-hander wheel just went over the top and super awkward to try to get back on when you're going through rocks as Mudry can't quite get clipped back in oh and there's no gradient in that section either so that's going to be a lot of time lost oh still trying to press on though oh big hits there approaching Roberto's rock Well, and this section can be a really tricky one when you're on a good run as Dominic gets thrown off right there. Some ninja skills to avoid smashing straight into a boulder, but that's going to be it for the run for Dominic Mudry. Yeah, 347 already at split number two. He'll have to regroup and hopefully see him back for round number six at Sugar Mountain in the high country of North Carolina. Let's go. I mean, you can't not hit the triple-double. One of the most fun-looking sections of track on downhill southeast. So 425, that will be the final time. That unlucky number 13 tried to run it upside down to... Turn the luck around, but it wasn't enough to avoid some carnage in lower hairball. Some breakdancing skills right there from Mudry. Glad to see that he avoided anything worse. Here's Jake Kahn out of Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Seated with a 349.79. He was our series champ last year. Trying to get this season on the rails. His best finish was the 12th place at Windrock Bike Park. Yeah, he's seated in a really tight group. Quite a few riders, just about two seconds apart. He's gone clean with that double out of 10 gallon. Oh, and I love the pace out of Khan as he comes into the new upper hairball. This dirt just dry and perfect this weekend. Straight down the gut right there for Jake Khan. You can see a little bit of breaking before that section. He's only 4.69 back. It's a 123 at split number one. But what I can say is he's only a second back on our current second place rider, Walker Shaw. So there's more than one spot up for grabs on the podium today. Of course, it's going to be a super tall order for anyone to match that time of Ace of Vermette when he's firing on all cylinders. Nearly impossible to beat, but Jake is on a good run right here, although he's definitely going to be in the red to Ace. So look at the pace of him. The back end skips out a little bit and a beautiful double into that left-hand turn. So Khan is focused. He's got some dialed lines today. And you can see he's riding on that pace where he's able to skip over top of these rocks and not get caught up by the edges. Yeah, 
These wheels are really earning their keep today on the snowshoe track. Congo's high line right there, so just trying to carry more speed, flow over those rocks. Well, what's Khan done in this middle split? It is the most unforgiving section of track on our circuit this year. Split number two. So he's 15 seconds back. It's a 3.09, but he is in touch with Walker Shaw. He's just about a second off the second place time. So this could put him into the top three as Jake Khan powers down to the line. Oh, he goes fourth. 344.2 for Jake Kahn. He's loving it. He's owning it. That was a great run. Almost no mistakes that I could see in lower hairball. As we watch him drift over the top into this steep chute. Yeah, Jake's definitely building for a good second half of the season. And here's Cooper Rodriguez. He's smiling because he loves it up here in Snowshoe. He's out of Cary, North Carolina. Actually raced the Junior World Cup back here in 2019 where uh, he was infamously just rocking a white t-shirt and a chest protector. All the Euros were kind of scratching their heads, said, who is this kid? So Rodriguez was fifth in seeding yesterday. Jake Kahn brought that time down so cooper's gonna need to really drop quite a few seconds if he wants to challenge for a podium position as rodriguez goes wild in that left hander the only way you're gonna save a drift like that is if you are 100 percent committed before the wheels break loose and rodriguez looking ahead today and a double right there more wild moments and he's just 4.6 back, so 123.39. So again, in touch with that split of our second place rider, Walker Shaw. But this is where rider and equipment really have to dig deep. I know Cooper's already been through a couple of wheels so far this race weekend. Oh, but he is not holding back in the least bit. And I like that lime right there. Going up high, kind of drawing a nice arc into that sharp right-hand corner. One of the few sections that there's actually dirt in lower hairball coming into that right-hander. So we've got to anchor up, get some braking traction. Rodriguez cracking on here in lower hairball. Oh, and he's going to take it straight down the middle of this rod garden. So we've seen all different lines so far in the pro men's class. The low, middle, and high. Let's see what Cooper can do here in this lower hairball wood section. Oh, he's going to go straight middle right there. Kind of not quite up on that route like we've seen some other riders. And it's 311.75. So he's fifth place there. A couple seconds back on that time of Jake Kahn. What can Rodriguez do here at the bottom? Times were really tight here in the middle of the pack in seating. Well, just a couple more pedal strokes between Cooper, Rodriguez, and the finish line. And he's going to cross the line in fifth, a 347.02. Couple seconds off that time of Jake Kahn, who we just saw. So we'll look back up to the final rock section of lower hairball. Cooper just going straight down the gut. And Cooper Pleva is up next. He's out of Glenwood, New Jersey, at a 348 in seating. Good enough for fourth place in that session. He's going to have to drop some time if he wants to get on the podium today. Oh, and I like that line off Cupcake, airing it out to the outside, setting up for the corner in the air. And you can kind of see the body language. Pleva trying to keep it really smooth up here, save some energy. There's so much track ahead of you here at Snowshoe. Let's go, Cooper! Go! Skating on the corner knobs of those tires through this berm section. None of the pro riders have actually been using 
those berms. There are three back-to-back -back berms. They're all straight lining that section. That's Pleva got in this rock section. Yep, just doubling down to the backside. And it's 125.12. So he's six seconds off the pace of Ace of Vermette as he rips that left-hander. But he is in touch with a potential podium position. Pleva's got nice speed. So I'm kind of double down into that compression like we saw Ace of Vermette do as his front wheel trying to skid out on those roots. Able to kind of gap down into that left hand turn as well. Well, a little bit over the front end right there for Pleva. He's had some good seating results so far this season. Not been able to back it up with a top podium finish so far in 2023. I do like what I'm seeing right here. And he's going to go straight down the middle of that rock garden. Always an unnerving section when you're getting bounced around before you go off that big hook to flat. Yeah, riding super strong and composed. You got it. Split number two, and it's a 316 at .81. So that is back on the split time that we saw from Cooper Rodriguez, one rider earlier. Pleva is bleeding time here at the bottom of the track. We'll see what Cooper Pleva can do when he crosses the finish. He's not going to repeat that fourth place we'll effort that from seeding. He goes sixth, 350.9, 24 seconds off the pace of Ace of Vermette. Well, let's head to the hot seat after we watch this replay of Cooper. We got to check in on Ace of Vermette, see how he's holding up there. Whew. That's a great save by Pleva. Well, folks, I'm down here in the hot seat. We've got three riders left to go, but right now it's Asa Vermette who's on top with a 326. Asa, how'd you get into a rhythm on that run? That is a pinned time. I just wanted to try to keep it smooth from yesterday. I had a big crash. I could have definitely pushed harder, I feel. I just tried to stay as smooth as possible, and sometimes smooth is faster, so it felt good. Nice. How are you getting on with this track at Snowshoe? It's your first time here, and you absolutely killed it. Thanks a bunch. I, uh, it's such a fun track. It's sick to be riding a track that I've watched on like YouTube and Red Bull TV of like my idols ripping down it. It's so sick. It's so cool. Stoked to have you here, bud. Three riders left to go. We'll see if Asa can hold on for another win here at Downhill Southeast. Well, Corey Jackson wants to mix it up on the podium this weekend. He's at a base Virginia. A 347 was the time for Corey in seating yesterday. It's his best seating result here at SRAM Downhill Southeast. Oh, and you can see Corey is chomping at the bit to get into this run, nearly sprinting off of the Cupcake Road Gap. It wasn't too many years ago that Corey Jackson was also racing the junior class at the World Cup here at Snowshoe in 2019. But he doesn't want the junior riders to steal the show today as the young 16-year-old Ace of Vermette still on the hot seat. Oh, and Jackson's on that same line that we saw Vermette on through that rock garden. 6.14 back. It's a 124.92 top split for Corey Jackson. It's going to put him fourth place at split number one. We'll pick Jackson up in the rocks. Oh, carried a ton of pace over that section. On a similar line that we saw Cooper Pleva just carving up that section. Well, Jackson's keeping it clean. That's what you've got to do here in lower hairball. 
Try to keep that consistent pace. I am liking the pace that I'm seeing. We'll see if he can hold that through this final section, the most critical section on the track in Snowshoe. Oh, and just yeah. nailed it already on the pedals and getting a great pump out of the woods. So it's a 3.11.23. He is third at split number two, so he's pulling back some time on the field. So Jackson trying to make his bid for a podium. He was sitting third at split number two. Can he hold that to the bottom with just two more riders to come? Well, Jackson desperately wants to find more time. Oh, he's going to slide back to fifth. It's a 344.6 for Corey Jackson when he crosses the line. He gave it everything today. He's going to have a couple more opportunities in our season to jump up onto the podium. As we go back up to the final section, he gets bumped off his line just a little bit. Doesn't seem to bother him with great exit speed. And here is Call Your Key. Speaking of speed, at Asheville, North Carolina, was second place in seating with a 346 and had a great breakout result at round number one at the Trials Training Center before he sustained an injury that's kept him out of racing for the past few rounds. McCall, your key is back. Just dusted the track right there. Threw up a huge roost diving into 10 gallon. I think these young riders are really getting a ton of confidence seeing Ace of Vermette take the win earlier at Red Rock Creek and they believe that they can win these races. On an inside line right there from Call Your Key. I like that. That's a little bit shorter. Able to carry more pace as well. Oh, and he didn't mess about with any outside lines. Went straight down the gut there in the rock section. And it's a 124.58. So fourth place at split number one. But we all know that the most critical sections of this track are coming up here in the rocks. Good pace right there from Key. That's a pretty flat section before you get some more gradient here in lower hairball. And you can see that suspension just trying to eat up what Call Your Key's dishing out to it today. Oh, incredible pace into this left-hander. Set that up beautifully. Oh, and call your key, trying to get backside and just pump the rocks and roots here in lower hairball. Can he smooth this section out? Oh, he's on the inside right here, and it looks to me like he is on a picture-perfect run down here. Oh, and went deep there off Roberto's rock, had to really push down. And you can hear him breathing, working hard as he approaches the final rock section. Oh, perfect. Couldn't ask for a better run right there. It's a 136. He's second at split number two. So call your key. Could be guaranteed a podium position if he hangs on to the second position from here to the bottom with only one rider left to go. Oh, a little bit short there on the triple-double. Well, can Collier hold that pace? It looked like he got held up just a bit in that rhythm section. Call your key goes second with a 343.52, 17.38 back on Ace of Vermette, but that is going to guarantee him a podium position today. As we go back up to take a look at this great run through the rocks from Call Your Key. And we have one rider left at the top of the mountain. It is Lucas Dodora from Huntington Station, New York. Not even 16 years old yet. Dodora had a fifth place finish at the Trials Training Center and sixth place at Rybrock Creek for round number two. Unfortunately, was injured in practice at Windrock Bike Park, but he is back and already up to pace. So Dodora comes screaming into this wood. Oh yeah, super smooth. A 
Lucas riding for the Pro Builds team. Quick work of that rock section as well. So let's take a look at split number one. It's a 120.51, the second fastest split we've seen, only 1.73 behind Ace of Vermette. And that was fast, folks. That was great pace across that section. Visibly quicker than the other riders we've seen. So can Lucas hold this together? He was our top-seeded rider. So puts on a great run yesterday. Trying to repeat that performance today. Oh, brilliantly set up for that tight corner. Lucas continuing to make that bike work through the rough stuff in Snowshoe. Yes, Dodora is on it here, folks. This is looking really good with second place at split number one. Had to soak up a huge hit on that drop. Oh, and he's got a direct line here in the final rock section. Maybe ran a little bit wide, but he's still sitting second at split number two. So it's the 302.36. Don't know if he can pull back 7.8 on Ace of Vermette, but surely he can hold on for a podium if he's able to hit this rhythm section clean. Oh, perfect backside there for Dodora on the triple. Well, here is Lucas Dodora making his bid for a podium at Snowshoe. And Dodora going to cross the line in second. 335.77 for the Pro Builds Racing Rider. A huge effort from Lucas today. He will join Ace of Vermette and Call Your Key on the podium today. Can barely believe it. Giving us two thumbs up. There's Jake Kahn congratulating him. Khan might be in shock that everyone on this podium is 16 years of age or younger. Just a dominant performance from these young men today at Snowshoe. And I can't help but think that they're going to continue building this momentum. There's Ace of Vermette on top for his second win of the season. Lucas Dodora in second and call your key on the box for the first time this year in third. Somebody cracked these boys a monster. <laughs> it was a lot better than seating. I crashed in my seating run. I went over the bars, clipped my pedal. I was just trying to keep it smooth this, this run, and it worked for me. Smooth as fast, I guess. I was expecting it to be way flatter. It was way more fun than I thought it was going to be, and way less rough than I thought it was going to be, too. Like in all the videos, the holes look like twice as deep and stuff, but it was, it was, it was chill. It was fun. I'm stoked to be here because I'm going to be racing World Cup here next year, 2024. So I'm just stoked to practice the track and get used to it before I send my life down. <laughs> Well, that is it for racing here at round number five of the SRAM Downhill Southeast in Snowshoe, West Virginia. What an incredible performance from our pro women and our pro men. And congratulations to Zana Logar, winner of our pro women's race, and Asa Vermette taking another win in the pro men. We really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for tagging along with us on this entire series. We're going to the high country of North Carolina and Sugar Mountain for round number six.